students hello and welcome back to the journey of colorful and vibrant yakshagana of karnataka the stage of yakshagana the stage is constructed in a paddy field or a temple yard and at a place easily accessible to all the arena measuring about 20 feet by 20 feet in size is marked out and four bamboo poles are fixed at the corners and are decorated with garlands of mango leaves swung between them this becomes the stage proper behind the stage is a raised bench or a table or two placed for the bhagavata and his accompanists some more space is left on either side for the entry and the exit of the characters of the play the characters enter the stage from the bhagavata left side and exit from his right at the right hand corner sits the man who plays the chende this is a high strung drum played with two sticks and can be heard at a great distance another drum maddale is played by a drummer who usually keeps standing to the left of the bhagavata on the other three sides of the stage a few mats are spread out for the audience to sit women folk usually sit on the left and men in front and on the right near the stage specially constructed green room called chauki to put on their makeup for the day's play the chauki is a temporary enclosure made up of palm fraud matting the costumes and ornaments required for the play are hung on its walls mirrors are placed on the ground and the artist sits down in row facing them makeup is an elaborate affair in yakshagan some characters requiring as many as 3 hours for the job performance structure or the pattern after an early meal at dusk or a little after yakshagan performers move to a specially constructed green room called chauki to put on their makeup for the day's play one corner of the chauki is set apart for the installation of the troops deity and ganesh the remover of all ill it is only after their worship that the artist commences their makeup in the chauki the bhagavata and his accompanist stand before the image or the symbol of ganesh sing his praise and offer him coconut and plantain and finally perform the aarti bhagavata and his accompanist these fists then move on to the stage proper and occupy the customary place from then on the prelude to the play proper commences on the stage while in the green room the actor dancers begin to put on their makeup and costume a little after dusk the chende is played for the length of the time and its piercing beats announces the play and its venue to the people of the surrounding areas in yakshagan it has been the custom from time immemorial for the males to play both the male as well as the female roles before they begin their makeup the artist who play the male roles put on the black pajama and those who play the female role put on the skirts they tie up their hair and proceed to paint their faces the makeup is usually simple in case of female roles but intricate in case of special role like those of kirit the hunter gandharva the celestial being a rakshasa a demon or a rakshasi demoness there are other special types of facial makeup too the play begins with a prologue called subhalakshana by the time the subhalakshana comes to an end the village audience would have all gathered and it is time to stop the prasanga proper yes it is time to start the prasanga proper the bhagavata commences the prologue subhalakshana of the forthcoming play the bhagavata along with the musician who provide him instrumental accompaniment emerges from the chauki or the green room and arrives on chauka the stage he is followed by hanuman nayak the hasyagara or the clown and his tribe of kodangis 
He is the counterpart of Vidushak of Sanskrit drama. The chief difference in this is the Vidushak's role is quite specific for he follows the written text. No such a written text is binding on Hanuman Nayaka. Even when he plays a role in the main prasanga, his speech is unbridled. On the stage, the Bhagavata, the Sangeet Gara, the Bhagavata's assistant who take over his work, the drone player and finally the Maddal Gara, all these sit on or stand together. It is customary for them to wear black coat, red or checkered purple turbans and white dhotis. The Bhagavata sings the song which tells the story of the play, introduces the main character and lends a sympathetic ear to what they say and also give them counsel whenever they need it. A Shruti, drone, accompanies his voice throughout. This was provided in former days by a gourd pipe like the one used by snake charmers. It was called the Shruti Burude. The Bhagavata, besides singing, plies a pair of small, thick cymbals made of bronze and silver alloy, thus keeping time to his singing. The Maddalgara follows him closely. One other instrument which is freely used is Chende. The Bhagavata, after finishing his songs in praise of Ganesh and the deities of the famous local temples, may chant a few devotional songs and along with them repeat the bowls or the bidatigge syllables of the maddala. After the Bhagavata finishes the invocation songs, he sings a Sanskrit verse in praise of the ten incarnations of Vishnu and pays homage to the deities presiding over the eight directions. He next describes in verse the true characteristics of good theatre in order to enlighten the audience about the virtues and rules of dramaturgy. He supports his statement with verse culled from Bharata's Natya Shastra. After this, elaborately dressed characters like Bala and Gopala enter the stage along with the songs accompanying of drum syllable meant to describe footwork. With the exit of Bal and Gopala, Hanuman Nayaka enters and monopolizes the stage with his irreverent, irrelevant as well as witty conversations with the Bhagavata. This is meant to provide entertainment, pure and simple, till the actual play commences. A bit of a farce may also be enacted. Hanuman Nayaka has his Kodangi tribe behind him to goad him to talk to the Bhagavata. The Kodangi also plays a few dance movements to the accompaniment of a few songs. At this juncture, the elephant face of Ganesha is presented from behind the curtain and the songs in praise of Ganesh are sung. Finally, the Bhagavata offers to please the deity by playing on the drum variations of intricate tala or time cycle called Kautuk and proceeds to the play. Nowadays, this bit is almost forgotten. After the invocation and the arti of Lord Ganesh is over, a prayer is next offered to Skanda, the son of Lord Shiva. He is commonly addressed as Subbaraya or Subramanyam. This prayer is a song consisting of both words and drum bowls. The Kodangi once again makes witty remark about worship of Subaraya. Then the Bhagavata pays homage to Shiva and his consort Uma and others. Two female characters, Strivesha, then enter. They bow to the audience and give a Lasya recital. They may later on play important female roles in the play that follows. The songs sung during their dance sequence suggest that they are two spouses of Krishna who had appeared on stage earlier with his brother Balaram. 
These songs are generally interspread with drum bowls that lend themselves to elaborate footwork and to body flexions evocative of Shringar Bhava or the romantic mood. They consist of many charming lasya movements and are so sophisticated and expressive that the term folk, when used to describe them, loses all meaning. With their exit, the prologue or sabhalakshan is over and what comes next is the prasanga chosen for the night. The prasang commences with odalagga, a presentation with all pomp and ceremony of its chief character. Every Yakshagana Prasang begins with Odalaga of the type. Odalaga is a Kannada term meaning the court of a king or god. A Bhagavata story may begin with Odalaga of Krishna. A song in praise of him is sung and then Krishna presents himself from behind the temporary curtain. The Bhagavata supplements this song with numerous rhythmic drum bowls and at last Krishna pushes inside the curtain and presents himself on the stage. If it is a story from Bhagavata, Krishna either alone or accompanied by his spouse is presented. These characters enter the stage from behind a temporary curtain too. The more the characters behind the curtain, the more impressive and colourful is the scene. The most impressive Odalagga comes from a Mahabharat episodes where all the five Pandava brothers and sometimes their mother Kunti in addition are presented. Songs from Odalagga scenes are different for different groups. The Odalagga may be repeated during the course of the play to introduce other prominent characters like a king, a demon or a villainous person like Kichaka. But the second Odalagga will not be as elaborate as the first one. After this dance sequence is over, the Bhagavata helps to introduce each personality. Hanuman Nayaka, who by then might have sneaked into the stage cracks some jokes. The most colourful as well as the most hair-raising introduction of Odalagga is set apart for a demonic character, a Rakshasa or a Rakshasi. The Rakshasa starts his ferocious roar from the green room itself and raising great expectation, rushes in and stands behind the curtain showing his back. A huge disc behind his crown and his profuse swaying hair make him look like a person of more than average size. He dances in a slower tempo now and then pausing and giving out a blood curdling yell. When he finally faces the audience, he pushes the curtain down. Then he starts performing his morning ablutions. He rubs his teeth, washes his face and pours water over his body. These are shown by suggestive gestures. Then, picking the end of his red and white upper cloth, he fashions a linga, the emblem of Shiva. All demons are supposed to be devotees of Shiva. Then, he puts on ash strips on his forehead and worships the linga through appropriate gestures. The two oil-fed lamps that normally light the stage are brought quite near his face. His grim makeup, glimmering in the semi-lit stage, creates a deep impression on the audience. Now and then, handful of powered raisins are splashed on the flames of the lamp to make it emit a sudden flare. Parshuram, said to be the sixth incarnation of Vishnu, is conceived of as an awesome and valorous personality and his Odilagga is quite spectacular. In some plays, characters like Chandi, Hanuman, Narasimha are led to the state from a great distance, attended by torch bearers, thus raising great expectations. On reaching the stage, 
powdered resin is thrown over the flames of the torches creating impressive spurt of momentary brightness. The Bhagavata is pivotal to the performance of Yakshagana. In fact, he is called the first Vesh, literary the guise. The hero is called the second Vesh and is only next to him in importance. As the Bhagavata sings, the character to whom the song refers dances to the rhythmic beat of cymbals and maddale, displaying appropriate gestures and facial expressions. These gestures are stylized. They are like the gestures we normally use in the course of ordinary conversation. Sometimes the dancer himself begins the refrain of the song to come. When it refers to him and leaves it to the Bhagavata to take it up and continue. For this, the dancer's knowledge of the musical pattern of the song has to be as complete as that of Bhagavata. Such a dancer needs a good voice too. The dance interprets the mood of the song which often vary from stanzas to stanza or of this more or later on. After the dance is over, the dancer renders in first person and in prose the content of the song. It may be his part of dialogue or it may be a soliloquy. If it is in the former, the dancer's adversary or a friend replies to him and in the later case, the Bhagavata responds as a sympathetic listener. This kind of speech is spoken extempore at the spur of the moment depending on the ingenuity of the person. Over the years, each actor would have heard his elder extemporizing on stage and he would have assessed the nature of the characters and situations presented. He would have trained himself to carry on the dialogue in his own way. Such speeches and dialogues interspread with dance do not become tedious. For one thing, the dance which takes up a lot of the dancer's energy do not leave him in a gay mood for the endless arranging and for another. Once the audience accepts the style and medium, it merges itself into the play. The textual content of each song sets a limit to its expression in prose. The actors cannot go out of the limits imposed by the composer of the play. If they recklessly cross these natural limits, often long speeches will naturally tend to preponderate. And the audience, if they recklessly cross these natural limits often, the long speeches will naturally tend to preponderate and the audience will naturally get bored. Not only this, the operatic nature of performer will itself be lost in course of time. In all these fantasy plays, mostly mythological, we get a few characters who represent the common people of a non-romantic nature like a servant, a priest or a forest guard. These people are depicted in realistic manner, both in regard to their costume and their speech. One such prominent figure is Hanuman Nayaka, who is both a clown and an errand boy for all the heroes. Such characters do dance when appropriate songs are sung, but these dances are simple and short. Their speech is commonplace for they speak the language of day-to-day -day life and sometimes the local dialects too. The speech of the characters like Narada and Vashisht who are respected by the heroes as well as the gods of the Prasanga is polished and high sounding like that of main characters. But their costumes are not so impressive, neither are they intended to be so. A special distinction has to be made when a character like a Kirata steps onto the stage. His costume is colorful and impressive, but his speech is unsophisticated. In order to show that he is an unschooled forest dweller, 
he usually speaks in a peculiar Kannada dialect of Malnad belt. It sounds funny, but it is also pleasing. Many early composers wrote songs dealing with such characters in similar dialect. The Kirata uses this dialect when he converses with Bhagavata too. But when he has to converse or deal with the high romantic characters of the play, he likewise uses a flowery language. The Yakshagana play builds up a drama with the help of tense situation, emotional conflicts and the clash of loyalties. Scenes depicting great valor and deep pathos and love or separation hold the attention of the audience. A battle between two adversary raises the mood of the audience to a fervor pitch. Another important aspect of the play is the introduction of superhuman characters like a Rakshasa or a Rakshasi, a Kirata, a Gandharva or a Chandi. This creates a tense situation straight away and raises great expectation and the audience is held in suspense. A good prasanga always has in it a demon or a demoness, a kirata or a gandharva. Among actions on the stage, the battle scene is the thing to enjoy. There is only one solitary prasanga which is totally devoid of battle scenes. It is a story built round the love of Princess Chandravali to Krishna, the divine lover. Dance sequences showing a character roused to anger or a character marching to the battle front and finally jumping into the fray contain rigorous forms of dance. These with appropriate music create a fine illusion of clash. It is the drumming, the synchronization of the maddale and the cattle that inspire the movement. The rich voice of the Bhagavata and his high pitched stretching notes create a maddening atmosphere. The actual killing of an adversary is usually not shown on stage, but the defeated opponent acknowledges the same by withdrawing from the stage. In cases where the opponent is supposed to be actually killed in the battle, the dead man lies down on the ground. A parent or a friend or a wife or a lover may now and enter and lament the death of the hero. One of the most pathetic scenes in the Mahabharata episode is the death of Karna's valorous son Vrasasena and Karna lamentation over the son's dead body. When that is over, a curtain is held to hide the body and the characters move away unnoticed. In most of these mythological plays, miracles bring relief to the stricken. In battle scene, the tempo of dance and music rises as the pace quickens. Though the actual movement of the hands and the feet are not so quick, we are made to feel that something terrible is taking place. Two adversaries may challenge each other, push each other with their elbows, belabor each other with clubs or shoot each other with bows and arrows. They ultimately hold each other by the palm leaning backward, the toes touching and swirl, a simple thing which many children often do. But against the background of clashing drums and flying trapping, this simple action creates an illusion of intense conflict. Most of the prasangas bear the name Kalaga or battle. Next in the number and importance comes Parinayas or story ending in happy marriages. A lot of hurdles have to be crossed before such a wedding can take place. The lovers have perforce to cross many hurdles and undergo such tribulations before their love finds fulfillment. In such plays, more than the dance, it is the spoken word that expresses fully the lover's passion for each other. The love-lorn heroine often uses her maid as a messenger while the hero uses an ordinary servant who mostly happens to be a Hanuman and Ayak. He has to be witty, he has to provoke laughter amongst the audience. So 
His tongue is unbridled. Instead of language, he fairly uses slanguage. Vulgarity and obscenity of expression may at times transgress the limit of propriety. As for Hasya Rasa or the comic element, it is the monopoly of the Hanuman Nayak. The textual content of the songs rarely provides any material for it. Hanuman Nayak, as a result, is as free as the winds. Though he is a part of the ancient story, his jokes are certainly not circumscribed by the past. He comments on everything around him, pokes fun at the weakness of his audience. Puns and deliberate slips of the tongue build up the armory of his jokes. Clownish dance movement and comic grimaces add to his repertoire. Normally, Yakshagana plays have happy endings. A play ends always with a mangalam. It may be a happy end that comes after the victory of virtue over vice or the one where a deserving couple is joined together in marriage. Tradition stipulates that song extolting the Trimurthis, the Brahma, Creator, Vishnu, the Preserver and Shiva, the Destroyer and the Ten Incarnation should be sung toward the end. A few prayer songs are sung and the Bhagavata and his accompanist followed by one stride more in procession to the green room. They are supposed to bring back Balarama and Gopal to the green room. The play that has been staged was theirs after all. In the green room, workshop is against offered to Ganesh and the lights are waved. Thus, the play that started from Chauki green room also ends there. In Yakshagana, the stage is merely a passage. The whole play is conceived more as a ritual than a mere entertainment. Yakshagana, gorgeous dance opera from Karnataka. Yakshagana, meaning music of the heavenly yakshas, is a colorful form of popular theater which combines singing, dancing, energetic dance and acrobatics. There are three variations of it and all of them are performed in the southern state of Karnataka. Yakshagana is dominated by battle scenes and thus its dominating rasa or sentiment is heroic. Although Yakshagana is often regarded as a form of folk theatre, it is however a complex form of art with its classical melodies and reference to Sanskrit literature. The History and the Text The earliest extant Yakshagana play is in the form of a palm leaf manuscript dates back to 1564. More written evidence from the following centuries throws light on its history. In the early 20th century, Yakshagana was taught in the village schools in Karnataka. It served as a tool to memorize the mythological stories on which the plays are based. Yakshagana mostly deals with heroic sequences from Puranas and the great epics, the Mahabharat and the Ramayana. The language is mainly local folk language, although quotations in Sanskrit are frequent. Types of Yakshagana Yakshagana evolved in three subtypes. Here, the focus is on the grandiose outdoor form performed during the dry season. A kind of chamber form of Yakshagana was evolved in coastal Karnataka. It is performed indoors and no makeup and costumes are used. In some of the northern parts of the state, there is Yakshagana influenced theatre form Doddata or the big play. Its themes may be derived from mythology, but it also deals with love stories and satirical themes. The Troop and the Music The troop or Mela of the outdoor type of Yakshagana may have as many as 20 members and it is usually named after a village or a temple. The troop consists of actors, dancers, singers, musicians and stage assistants. The chorus and the whole performance are led by a troop leader, 
a feature already common in the classical Sanskrit plays. In Yakshagana, he is called Bhagavata. The rich music employed classical ragas and folk melodies. Some of the ragas, however, are found only in Yakshagana repertoire. The troop leader has an active role in the performance. He acts as the narrator, sings and leads the orchestra with cymbals. The orchestra only consists of drums and pipes. The Space Outdoor Yakshagan is performed during the cold season from November to May. The performance usually starts around 9 p.m. and ends when the sun rises. The performance space is, is a square at ground level while the audience sits on its three sides. Two large oil lamps illuminate this temporary stage. The performance. Yakshagan is performed by an all-male cast while boys play the female roles, but actors may appear in several roles. The leader of the whole performance, Bhagavata, has a crucial role as he takes care of narration, much of the singing and lead the orchestra. Another important feature is the buffoon, who, like his counterpart in Sanskrit plays, moves freely among the mythological characters of the play. A portable curtain is used as in many of the forms of South Indian theatre, but otherwise the stage is empty. As the play deals mostly with heroic battles, the acting technique is characterized by energetic dances and powerful jumps and kicks, which give Yakshagan the acrobatic character. The acting technique refers to the classical Abhinaya mime technique, although only sketchily. The evening starts with the necessary preliminaries in the dressing area and on the stage during which God Ganesh is venerated. The next ritual are dedicated to Krishna after which follows the opening dance. The actual play usually starts with an audience scene at the king's court. It introduces many of the central characters in a grand style. When the sun rises, the leader of the troupe sings his concluding song. After that, the actors return to the dressing area carrying the two oil lamps with them. Costuming and Makeup The costuming has a central role in giving Yakshagana its overwhelming Baroque character. The exaggerated huge turban-like headgear, Mundasu, of the central character dominates the costuming. The mightier the character, the bigger his black turban glittering with golden ribbons. The actors in main roles wear thick dhotis wrapped as trousers, while the upper body is covered with green, red or black jackets. The heavy chested ornaments, ear decoration, necklaces, iplots are made of gilded gold. The makeup of important main characters including a count shell design of the sides of the cheeks and a U-shaped mark on the forehead. Many of the main characters wear black mood statues made up of thread of cotton. Students, I am sure you have enjoyed the colourful and the buoyant and the robust Yakshagan journey.